Hi everybody, so following on from my last video, let's now dive into the natural rate of unemployment. Such a weird random concept, but a really funky cool one to cover and fully understand. We're going to do that in this video as well as looking at the key determinants of the natural rate of unemployment. So the natural rate of unemployment is unemployment that occurs when the labour market's in equilibrium. So yes, even at equilibrium in the labour market, there can be unemployment. Now immediately that sounds really weird because at equilibrium in a labour market, at that wage rate, supposedly all workers who are willing and able to work are working, yet there can still be unemployment. Yes, there can be. It consists of structural, frictional and seasonal unemployment. And because you're at equilibrium, which is the best an economy can achieve in their labour market, and there is still an unemployment rate, the natural rate, we can never achieve 0% unemployment in an economy. There is always a natural rate. And for that reason, the macro objective for unemployment is to achieve full employment. That is unemployment at the natural rate of unemployment. So now let's understand where this comes from by diving into the labour market. So here is the labour market. You have the price of labour, that's the wage rate on the y-axis, quantity of workers or employment. On the x-axis, you have a normal looking downward sloping demand curve for labour, D of L, demand for labour. Just bear in mind this comes from firms looking to employ workers. You have also a normal looking upward sloping supply curve of labour. And it's us individuals who supply ourselves for work. We make up this curve. And this curve is upward sloping because it represents the quantity of workers who are willing and able to work at various wage rates. Upward sloping because at higher wage rates, more workers are willing and able to work. You can earn more and live a better quality of life. But economists say that this is not the actual labour supply curve. Uh-uh, no sir. The actual labour supply curve looks like this. So can you see? Positioned to the left of the S of L curve, but tending towards it. This is the S actual curve. And this curve represents the quantity of workers who actually take jobs at varying wage rates. So I recommend for you guys, learn the S of L curve as basically the willingness to work curve, whereas the S actual curve is the taking jobs curve. And yes, there is a difference between the two, but the reason this curve tends towards it is because at high wage rates, that difference uh, comes down and down and down, less and less and less. Where equilibrium comes from in the labour market is where S actual hits demand for labour. That occurs here. Let's call that wage rate W1 and quantity of workers employment. Let's call it QFE. FE stands for full employment. Nice terminology here. So this is full employment in the labour market. This corresponds to YFE on an AD and AS diagram. So this is the number of workers in work. That is full employment in the labour market. But can you see that at that wage rate of W1, these workers, call it Q2, Q2 workers are willing and able to work Yet only QFE workers are actually taking jobs. Aha! The difference between those two quantities represents the natural rate of unemployment. Yes. And that gap can be explained by those who are structurally unemployed, frictionally unemployed and seasonally unemployed. There we go. Let's understand how. So start with structural unemployment. So maybe Q2 workers, they're willing and able. Able means physically able to take whatever this job is, but maybe they lack the appropriate skills. They're occupationally immobile, so they can't actually take the job. Or maybe it's geographical immobility. Q2 workers are willing and able, physically able to take this job, but they don't like where that job is located. They're geographically immobile, so they don't actually take it. Maybe these workers are frictionally unemployed. So you've got Q2 workers here, they're very willing, able, they're happy with this job that they see at W1, but they think in a few days time, something even better is gonna come. A job that's more suitable for them, that's got greater perks for them is going to come along. So they want to extend their search time. And so they don't take the job on offer, frictional unemployment. Maybe it's seasonal workers. So this could be the off season right now. And there is a job that these workers can take in the off season at W1, but they choose to reject it for some reason seasonal unemployment, why workers then don't take jobs that are on offer. So structural, frictional, seasonal can explain why there is a gap between Q2, those who are willing and able, and QFE, those who actually take jobs. Brilliant. But maybe a more interesting question is to go into the determinants of the natural rate. Because there are countries out there who can have very high natural rates of unemployment. Take France and Spain, for example, some of the highest natural rates in the world, versus countries like the UK and the US who have significantly lower natural rates of unemployment. 
So what determines the natural rate of unemployment in an economy? Well, it's a big debate. Free market economists have their ideas. They will blame government intervention, whereas interventionist economists have their ideas. They will blame market failures. So it's a debate. It's interesting to discuss. So what do free marketeers say? Well, they would say that too much government intervention is the reason. So they would say, for example, if the benefit system that the government has implemented is too generous, it almost encourages structural unemployment, where if you're occupationally mobile, you remain so. You don't engage in training programs to reskill yourself. You remain occupationally mobile because you have the safety net of benefits. You might be geographically immobile. But with a benefit system, you don't really have a cost, do you? Those generous benefits you can live off and therefore you don't actually move to where those vacancies are. Even frictional unemployment, free marketeers would say with a generous benefit system, you're encouraging longer search times and more frictional unemployment. So generous benefits can increase those two and thus increase the natural rate. They would also say that excessive regulation in the labor market is a big driver of high natural rates, especially strict hiring and firing regulation. And the idea is if hiring and firing regulation is very, very, very strict, firms are not willing to take big risks hiring low skilled workers. It can drive up structural unemployment, occupational immobility of labor. Flip it the other way around. In the US, there is no central regulation when it comes to hiring and firing, apart from if it's discriminatory. So if it's based on gender, if it's based on disability, if it's based on race. Otherwise, firms can hire and fire when they want. And what that means is firms are willing to hire low skill workers because they can pay them a low wage and hopefully train them up on the job to be very productive members of the workforce, knowing that if it doesn't quite work out, if the worker doesn't respond very well to the training, they can easily fire them. So what it means is if you're low skilled in the US, you can still access jobs quite easily. Whereas go to France and Spain, where you have very strong trade unions who have fought for extremely tight hiring and firing regulation. For firms in those countries, it's way too risky to hire these low skill workers, even if they have good intentions to train them up. If that worker doesn't respond well to the training, the firm is stuck with an unproductive worker. And that can drive up structural unemployment. Very interesting determinant that one. Whereas interventionist economists would say, hey, 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 what a load of rubbish free marketeers. No, it's not that there's too much government intervention. It's that there's not enough. That's why the natural rate of unemployment is driven higher. They would blame market failures and they would say because of market failure, there is a lack of transport and housing infrastructure often in economies. You can argue some of these are public goods or merit goods, right? And therefore there won't be enough supply in the economy. And they would say, look, governments have to get involved and supply more. This can drive up geographical immobility of labor, but also frictional unemployment because people search within a smaller radius. Also, they would say, look, left to the free market, there'll be a lack of in-work training programs because there are positive externalities to these, which will be ignored. There'll be an underproduction, underconsumption of these in the free market. So the government needs to come in and provide more of these or help whereby more of these are provided on the job training so that if workers lose their jobs for whatever reason, they still have transferable skills to take other vacancies in the economy. They'd say without this, you're going to see higher structural unemployment. So interesting debate there, but just good to know that. And now we understand the natural rate, don't we? In proper detail, we get what it is. We know how to link into these three types and the determinants. Fantastic stuff, fascinating stuff, right folks? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.